this is the sixth of the series of upcycling my dream pictures wardrobe and uh, blazers oversized blazers are in and this this yes you're gonna love this one Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. I am excited today because it is starting to feel like spring. Of course, in Houston, it always feels like spring, but in the rest of the United States, I think it's getting a little bit better in the Northern Hemisphere. We can kind of see spring springing a little bit. So this is a perfect time to start our spring up cycles. Today, we are going to do three easy blazers. Yes, three easy blazers. And they're gonna be inspired by some of the blazers we saw on the runway. These three blazers, we're gonna gain our inspiration from them and take them just to another level. I hope you guys are excited. Let's do it. All right, first off, for spring, summer 2023, Sakai put a blazer, this blazer right here on the runway. We saw it in my runway review. If you missed it, I will put a link in the description box, but I loved all of their stuff. But this one in particular, I have been seeing this slit in sleeves for a while, for a couple seasons now. If you've been watching for a while, you know I've been saying we were gonna do this. And it's super easy, so we're gonna do it. And I really wanted to do this one because I thought it would be really good for those who like to wear blazers, but you get kind of hot, you know, you don't want <laughs> to sweat underneath here. So this one, I think is perfect for that. All right, here we have our first blazer. This one, I really like, it's super oversized and I really like the pockets. You can see the pockets here, they're really cool. So for this one, the only thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give this a simple and easy cape effect. So what you wanna do is go ahead and find that inside arm seam, grab a seam ripper, and you're going to seam rip both the outside and the lining seam for the inside arm seam all the way up to the underarm. All right, it's completely open. And all I want to do is fold this over exactly how it was folded. You can run the iron over it uh, to help, you know, make sure it stays how you want it. And then all you're going to do is attach the outside and the inside with your sewing machine. I'm going to do a top stitch because I'm going to choose a thread that matches as closely as possible to this that I'm sewing. But that's what I'm going to do because I don't have the patience, the hand sewing patience. But for all of those of you who do, you can go ahead and hand sew that all along there. And now you have a cape effect on your sleeve. All right, next up is this Awake Mode blazer. And I have been seeing this everywhere. All the it fashion girls, influencers are wearing this blazer. And I thought this one would be really, really good for those of you who got a little junk in the trunk and you want to make room for that. Hey, it's a reality. We're, we're people, we have bodies, real bodies. So if you wanna make room for that or you wanna show off your back, then this one is for you. We have this dark gray pinstriped blazer. Uh, this one, I love how it fits. I am going to turn it over to the back and it is really convenient, just like the one before. It has two seams that we can use in order to cut it. So I am going to cut it to like right before arm seam. Once again, we gotta get this seam ripper. All right, we're gonna seam rip it all the way up to right at the sleeve, but we're gonna cut it off about an inch or a half inch below that so we can get some turn room, uh, turn under room. All right, we're gonna need this part in one second, but for this, we want to take our iron and go ahead and turn the ends just like we did for the sleeves on the last jacket. We'll turn everything in so that we can get ready to add a top stitch. And I'm gonna do it the exact same way when we close it up. And if you watch my how to crop a blazer tutorial, no sew, the no sew one, then you will also know that you could do this with hem tape. And that would be no sewing and you wouldn't see any seams. And when I say hem tape, I also mean heat and bind. Oh, I did decent. Okay. Oh, I forgot about that. It's got the little pleat there. We'll get it right. For this, I'm only going to use the suiting material. So I need to detach it. That was easy. So we need two, two ties. They could be this length, I suppose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut along these lines. Use the lines for what they are. I am actually going to 
fold it exactly on that line to make sure that once I start sewing it, I get it exactly how I want it. Now what I want to do is turn this inside out, line it up and sew it along this edge and sew it along one end. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn these right side out. All right, and since we already have that line set, that was helpful. All I have to do is iron this side. <laughs> Where I iron, you can see the paper. I need to roll out some new paper, but before we do that, we're gonna set this in. But before you do, you wanna make sure that you figure out where you need your tie to hit. I do have a short torso, so this is very important for me. So I want the bottom of my tie to be right here, which I was wrong. I had it down here, so I'm so glad I stopped a moment to figure this out. Bottom of the tie needs to be right here. All right, so now that we have it set, we wanna make sure we get the same on the other side. And now we want to go ahead and set those. All right, so now, just like before, we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and add a little top stitch. I have a dark gray, top thread and a lighter gray bottom thread. You can see the inside thread matches and the outside thread matches. Oh, let me show you this, the pleat. Let me show you the whole inside. That's what that looks like. Normally it's not closed on the bottom, but we're gonna close it just so that we don't have any instances where it's falling down underneath and can be seen. And last up is the off-white blazer. I love, love, love this blazer. Now, you guys know that we've done some embroidery in the past, so we're gonna add a little bit of a simpler version of that in this. And we've also done the asymmetrical cut, so it's actually combining two things we've already done. In my opinion, we're gonna make it better, so let's do it. And actually, in that show, it's a circle cutout, but I'm not sure which one I'm gonna do. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and try your blazer on or whatever you're gonna do this to and decide where you want the top of your cut to be. Um, if you're doing it above your chest, you know, or below your chest, where you want that to be. So I have both marked because I haven't decided. Um, if I do the circle, then I'll cut it from above the chest around here and keep one button so that it'll close. Unfortunately, this blazer has a stain on the front of it. So I think I'm going to do below the chest and just do the inverted cut like I've done before. And also if you have hips, you know, just go ahead and cut that thing open and let that be an open blazer. Give it a little pizzazz and keep it moving. What fabric. I wish you guys could feel this fabric. It is so nice. This one was meant to look very unfinished. And so what I'm gonna do is just take just a plain stitch around here just to keep the inside and the outside together so that it doesn't flop free from one another. I don't mind seeing the finished edges or anything like that. It's just that I don't want everything coming apart. So I finished adding that little stitch. You can't even see it, but now of course it came out of line. I realized that I should have done the stitch first and then cut. That would have saved me an extra step. The edges aren't great. So I'm gonna go back and kind of even those out a bit, make that look really nice. And then I can add some fray check to the edges. And now inspired by the off-white, we're gonna try to do some shot sashiko embroidery if i'm saying that wrong definitely let me know i've seen it a lot to put patches on and different things like that different patterns and different things like that we're going to keep it really simple with just a single line stitch and i am going to use this thick needle as well as some of my v90 uh, thread. It's just a thick thread, like an industrial thread that people use for upholstery and stuff like that. Because we all know I really like elements threads hanging down. I definitely want to run one along the edge. And we're gonna see if I can do this without sticking myself because I'm not at a good angle. But because I do want thread hanging down, I'm gonna start from the outside and I'm gonna make a knot on the inside that way it can't pull back through it's just a running stitch typically in sashiko the space 
is one third the distance of the stitch. Mine is more like kind of like one half, but we're gonna go with it and see how far we can get. I love hand sewing. Sometimes you have to lie to yourself. Ugh. All right, so here's how this one turned out. I decided to do it around the edge and then you can see that I varied the stitches so that it would turn out so that when it's folded back, it looks right. And then I went up to here and just kind of end it right there. I did tie another knot when I got to the end. And I'm gonna show you, I switched up the knots and how I do them. So let me show you guys right quick. Oh, I did it on the sleeve, the back of this one, and the front of this one. And then I also did it on the back in the middle. Everything is very asymmetrical. So I'm gonna get a little bit creative and add a little tie to the middle. So all I'm gonna do is take it out, that hurt. Take it in from the outside right here. And then all I'm gonna do, this is how I started doing my knots. It's the same way I end a stitch. I go through the fabric just a little bit, not the whole, all the layers, just the outer layer. And then I'm just gonna loop this around the needle two times and then I'll hold on to the needle. That ensures that the knot is in close to the fabric and I'll just pull it through. And now we have a knot on this end. And I can let both strings hang or I can cut the inside one however you wanna do it. Now, when I wanna tie it closed, I just take these two threads and tie them. All right, that did not work. So I did go and find uh, just this end of a hook and I am going to attach it to the strings we already have. The first two stitches for buttons and snaps are just the worst. It's like trying to trying to dress a infant, a crying infant. That's what it is. Or a antsy toddler. If I didn't have all of these black threads all over the place, like kind of rough looking anyway, I would use a matching thread. All right, now when it's set, I'm just gonna make that same little kind of knot. So now I need to use this thread and make a loop for it. So now we're just gonna make another knot. All right, so we'll put it on and see how it looks. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? If you like what you are seeing, definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing because this series is heating up and we got summer still to go, so you don't wanna miss it. And if you need help along the way planning out your upcycle projects, I do have an upcycle planner, both a digital version as well as a hard copy version if you're interested in that, in the description box and up above right there. And if you want to become a member for behind the scenes and sneak peek content, definitely hit that join button down below to learn more. All right, it's finally the time you've been waiting for. Let's see how they turned out and how I am styling them. this cape one first my I didn't think I was gonna like it honestly after I opened it up I'm just like I'll put this one first because you know I'm just gonna go ahead and stop now, I like this one it's doing some creative layering which I absolutely love and you guys know that the white top underneath is an upcycle I'll put that link in the description box below this one is a must and of course it was keeping me easy breezy even with all those layers I had on two sleeveless shirts and then the blazer but I looked like I was like fully covered but I wasn't all of this was out underneath and I was cool. And then let's talk about that backless one. That one 
well, it first of all made me realize I need to keep doing my work so I can get that back snatched. But outside of that, I love it. It's letting the thing do what the thing do <laughs> in the back. And it cinches that waist really nicely, depending on where you put the tie. It can really, really be a perfect tool to cinch it in the waist. And if you don't want to take out any of the back, you could just open up a spot and add some ties in there, and that can help you cinch the waist of a boxy blazer as well. And last one. The inverted circle one, mm. with the cargo jeans from last time, yes. I love this pairing. If you're interested in having that open cutout, you can see I even styled it for if you are trying to, not that you have to, but if you're trying to hide any of this area, you don't have to worry. I really, really like this one. It can be styled in so many different ways. I love the asymmetry. It's kind of like a low key tuxedo jacket and I'm loving that. So let me know, are you interested in upcycling any blazers in this super easy style? Let me know in the comments how you're gonna do yours. And if you made it to this part of the video, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Let me give you a quick update on the space the AC is done so we're gonna be working on moving in I am focused on just getting it up and running first before I make it absolutely beautiful I will give you guys updates it's mostly in my shorts along the way and then when it's fully functional then we will do a full tour but like I said thank you guys so much for showing me love for just uh, Y'all always love on me and I just appreciate you guys so much. I love you guys so much. This community is absolutely amazing and I don't know what I would do without you guys. All right, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!